Anthony, Alter Carbon Season 2, you're knocking it out of the park. It's Thanks, really man. cool to see you play Takeshi Kovacs. It's got to be interesting to play a role that has been played by other people, and it's the same character. Right. How do you kind of find making it your own, but also making sure you're true to this character who has been portrayed by other people in the past? Well, season one was very different than season two. And, you know, Takeshi was out for revenge. So he was a very dark, very mean, very stoic character. So in, this, in the beginning of this season, I wanted to bring that same energy in and allow the season to affect him and turn him and make him more emotional and make him, a, make him go from, because you're not worried about the arc of the second season. You have to think about the arc from the first episode to the end of the second season. So I was trying to play that arc and I really like what Joel and Will were able to do in the first season. So extracting a little bit of that, but putting my funk on it. Yeah, you, did a great, you did a good job with it. There's one thing that stood out to me in the action scenes that was really cool, almost like some Matrix-like stuff where everything's frozen, but the camera's moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, I'm curious, how did, is that like one of those bullet time type setups where there's a bunch of camera, how'd you do that on set? No, we, uh, they literally had us stand still and they rolled the camera for a few seconds and they did that over and over and over and over again. So then once we did the, uh, then we came back, that we did that sequence for a week. What? And yeah, 14 hours a day for a week. And at the end of the week, we came in and actually did the entire fight. So they would turn the lights off, turn the lights on, turn the lights off, turn the lights on and get those images. But then we did the entire fight. So they were able to put that strobe sequence within the entire fight. So, so you went from Endgame to this, back down to Atlanta Falcon Winter Soldier. Is yeah. that the, your body's got to be taken to beat. I mean, this is no. all action sequences. How are you holding up? No, I have a great stunt man. Aaron <laughs> Tony is a great stunt man. He is Daffy Duck to my Bugs Bunny. So every time somebody's about to get clobbered, they say, cut. I walk out, he walks in, and he gets clobbered. So he is my man. I got him a great rap gift. Oh, man. Well, he, so he earned it, man. He He's been busting it. his butt for it. Uh, but I, of course, got to ask about how things are going down in Atlanta. Is it as action packed as, as we see in Altered Carbon? On uh, it is. It is. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a huge, I mean, we only have six episodes, but it's a, it's a massive undertaking. It's a massive project. Uh, and we've been, it's, it's a lot, you know, it's Marvel. So the story's there, the character's there. But those action set pieces are just as vast. We saw you in a trailer throwing the shield. What was it like to learn how to pull that move off and throw the, the Captain America shield for the first uh, time? It was, I was surprised that they used me. Because, you know, you have a, a double, a dude that looks like you who's like a gymnast. And he, like, does all this stuff. That's when they're like, all right, Anthony, you do it. And I'm like, dude. You just saw what this dude did. How you going to ask me to do that? So I was surprised when I saw the Super Bowl trailer that they actually used me throwing the shield. But it's been, you know, th that thing is heavy, dude. Yeah, I bet. That thing is it's, it's like 12 pounds. So you're standing there with 12 pounds on your arm all day. After a while, your shoulder just gives, you know. So it's, uh, it was, we have some pretty cool uh, shield throwing sequences. That's pretty cool. Now I've got to ask you, if you could re-sleeve, as, as they do in Altered Carbon, as any superhero, mm -hmm. you can't say Falcon. Oh. Who would it be? Uh, I, well, I'm a, I love the Incredible Hulk. I've always been a Hulk fan. I've, I've, I love Mark Ruffalo as Hulk. Uh, so I would, I, would, I would go with the Incredible Hulk, especially the Hulk, that, like Smart Hulk, that was in Endgame. If I could be that dude, I would definitely be that dude. Chris. You're yeah. back. You're one of the few cast members who made it from Altered Carbon Season 1 to Altered Carbon Season 2. Yeah. Aside from the sleeves around you, what were some of the biggest differences in making this, this show? It's a different world. I mean, we are creating a different season of television that has never been seen before compared to Season 1. I mean, there, you really can't compare. There are apples and oranges. There's not um, uh, any way to translate it except for the vast story that we tell. Uh, Takeshi Kovach is obviously carrying on, and I get to be part of that. But like the TARDIS uh, in uh, Doctor Who, uh, it's a joy to get to play with new people, and especially uh, Dina, who um, I get to know uh, in an intimate way in season two, which is awesome. I, I love the relationship between your two characters. Thank of course, you. the big relationship is with Takeshi Kovach for yeah. you. Uh, how was it with Joel versus Anthony in, in those roles? Was, what was the biggest? Who did you like better? <laughs> Pick a favorite. Pick a favorite. No, uh, you, you know, it, it's, it, it's speaking of apples and oranges. Uh, there is, there is a, such a joy getting to play with uh, two strong, amazing movie stars that uh, bring such different elements to the work. 
um, Anthony this year brings a, a charisma and a kindness, um, almost um, um, a, a love that you can viscerally feel on the screen. Um, and that was uh, uh, just, for me, uh, the best part of it, uh, just his uh, open heart, and heart every day uh, working was uh, joy. I love that. And, and you two together, it was great. And you both play computers, but to some extent end up often playing two of the most human characters uh, on the show, which yeah. is an interesting play with the, from the writers. How, when they kind of approached you and said, like, you're going to play a computer, this is the re like the relationships you're going to build, the role you're going to play, how do they kind of pitch that to you? And then how do you, like, is it different from when you're playing a, a, a human character? Yeah, I think, um, I think there's an ability to actually um, simplify because you don't have the same sort of, I mean, these AIs have histories. They have um, things that they've been through that have shaped who they are and the way they see the world, which is um, amazing. And in that way, they're very like humans, but they don't live in the human world, so they're not dealing with the same human um, problems. And so there's an ability to sort of exist a little bit outside of that and um, have an innocence that um, I loved. and. Originally, I thought maybe it would be like Ex Machina, you know? Mm. But um, I'd seen the show, so I, I knew that it w was going to feel more human. Well, you knocked it out of the park. You did a really good job. Thank you so uh, much. And so this may come as a shock, seeing as we're comicbook.com, but we love to talk about superheroes. If you could re-sleeve as any superhero, who would you like to come back as? Spider-Man. Oh, nice. nice. Why Spider-Man? You get a little Spidey sense. I love spiders. Oh. Yeah, I love spiders. Um, I listened to a podcast about insects once, and then I just became fascinated by like spiders and insects and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm cool too. Don't worry. I'm no. not all about this. <laughs> but I also Spider Man's amazing. Like. He yeah. can do the most incredible things, and he's brilliant. Yeah. He's brilliant and strong and fast yeah. and, like, you know, um, light and. Yeah, can basically fly. Spider-Man's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Uh, You're gonna say Batman. Oh, that's so funny. No. Oh. Uh, but I, I, I could. Oh, Batman. No, so who are you gonna say? I'll just say that. No, oh. I, I, I always uh, sympathize with the villains in comic books. Yeah. For some weird reason. I think they're the most complex characters. So there are so many interesting villains, and especially like uh, what uh, Joaquin did with Joker. Me it's, in. Incredible. Yeah, so that, that was you interesting. You could be the Joker. No, too. I can't. No, I, I no, 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 no. That's that's done. I think we've Heath and what? Yeah, they've we've, done we've, it. We've killed. But him. if anyone could do it, it would so, be you. Well, that's I think. incredibly kind, yeah. and and I'll be dead before they remake anything of like that. So, <laughs> Alter Carbon season two, you two are evil. You two are. It, I take umbrage to the. We're not. We're. I beg to differ, we've sir. We've been miseducated. I, I would like to start, though, with your role as, I guess, we'll call it the antagonist. Maybe you don't see yourselves as the villains. I think that's a spoiler. Well, is, is it? <laughs> it comes pretty quickly. Uh, but so when you're playing a character who is, especially for you, uh, the, the, the character is manipulative and intense. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious, like, do you find inspiration in something else you've seen in a, a similar vein, or do you kind of? I don't, I kind of go, I really try to find the raw materials of somebody. And so with Danica, she's got all of these like really human desires. Like she wants to save like, you know, she, she wants to be, she wants autonomy from the protected script. She wants peace and order. She wants to stop these murders, but it's, it's how she goes about getting that is what sort of creates the horror. She goes at, she, she uses these tactics at the expense of honesty, at the expense of transparency, at the expense ultimately of compassion and love. And so that's sort of how I, um, I don't use like an external, because otherwise you only see the outside. I really like to get like into the internal workings of a clock mm -hmm. and figure out how it's built. And so um, it's sort of like Danica doesn't have a strategy that holds both. She just goes at one at the expense of these other human ideals. So it's like you go for a good thing at the expense of these other good things and then 
horror ensues. That's, that's what happens. So, yeah. uh, and Tobin, your your character gets very intense. I mean, a few. Yeah. Uh, I, and also this morning, I was watching it. Uh, I was watching. I think I'm not gonna say what episode, but there was a torture sequence. And then I walked out of my room, and you were in the elevator, and I was. Oh, I was I was ready. Oh my gosh! Just, oh, that, but, yeah. I remember <laughs> but, you. I spared you. <laughs> Thank you. What was the most intense moment on set for you? What what kind of? When he gave everyone cupcakes. That that was intense. Yeah, because I was in a diet and I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't have oh, all no. the cupcakes. You're torturing yourself. No, no. Yeah, but that's you know that's uh, self torture for the benefit of looking good in front of the camera. No, but y you know um, I don't know. There are certain there there were things that were physically demanding, but there were also other things where you don't see that much on the physical level, but it's on the psychological level, especially in the scenes that I had with Lila, because they kind of become very pokey with each other over the course of yeah, the. Danica likes to heckle him. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's it's, it's really really nice because you know on the one hand he, he's a military he's a soldier soldier you know he's sure. uh, he has a military um, uh, military task that he has to fulfill on the planet so he has, to, he has to stick to a certain sort of protocol but that protocol is constantly undermined by <laughs> by who me? who me yeah you Please. she's a bit of a spoiled brat that <laughs> so. character no but you know that's that that's those are the moments that are really really interesting as an actor because you have to be composed on the outside but there's so much boiling underneath and you don't want to go like break the fourth wall and go like Right. To the audience, but you want to show the human factor. So right. So I have to ask you really quickly before I'm out of here. If you could re-sleeve as one superhero, Ooh, who would it as be? a superhero. I really loved Thundercats. Could I be Chitara? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. That's good. That's good. Wow. Um, 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 oh, there are so many. Uh, either Batman or James Bond or my mother. Oh, well done. But that's creepy on it. That's like a whole other level of Oedipus syndrome, but like resleeving is your well, mom. <laughs> Sorry. Renee. Hi. Congratulations on coming back for season two of Alter Carbon. You. It's, yeah, you can't take for granted that you're coming back in this show. That's where I'd like to start. You are one of very few people who gets to make the jump from Alter Carbon season one to Alter Carbon season two. Mm -hmm. Your journey was very surprising for me. As somebody who watched the first one and then Good. watched the second season, when did you find out you're coming back? And was this journey anything like you imagined? Was it a big surprise to you? I always knew that I was coming back as long as there was something to come back to. In the, in the inception, Lita Calagridis, you know, had an idea and the two characters that would continue should all things work as planned yes. would be Kel and Poe. That was always her vision for the show. Um, what was amazingly, wonderfully surprising was, you know, though the actor didn't change, like the, the sleeve didn't change, but the but the character, you know, <laughs> changed in a really surprising way. That was that was something I heard kind of, you know, whispers about at the end of season one. What what the idea of what they were going to try mm. to create, and that was daunting. Um, to figure out how to play it, and um, and really exciting. I'm so glad I had that challenge. No, you did a great job with thank it because it was a layered character. It was this season super in a lot of ways. layered. You did a really good job. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and Simone, you play have played a character before that our audience at ComicBook.com loves with Misty Knight. You are no stranger to badass women. So I'd like to hear how those two experiences have compared, going from the Marvel universe with like action-packed Luke oh. Cage stuff and coming here to sci-fi, crazy, all kinds of stuff like that. Oh my gosh, I think the uh, the the love of prosthetics has lessened between <laughs> both characters. You know, Misty Knight. She has a prosthetic arm. That was a bitch. And now she's got these data coils that are a three-hour prep every morning. Oh my. Um, no, but in all seriousness, they it is great to be asked to play strong female characters, to be able to portray those on screen and for it to be on Netflix, 190 countries to see, you know, these two vastly different characters. Uh, Misty is all about community and serving the people of Harlem and to keeping them safe. And Trep is very much about herself, her money, the job in front of her. But underneath, you find something different. You find a level of humanity in this woman that I think that it's a beautiful thing to play. I love that. Yeah. You think there's a chance we ever see those those Luke Cage characters ever again? Do I think there's a chance? I think there's a chance for anything and everything. <laughs> the, the perfect answer. Yeah. And okay, so let me ask you this. We love talking about superheroes, which might be shocking from comic books. <laughs> uh, if you could re-sleeve as any superhero, and you can't say Misty Knight. No. Who, who would you re-sleeve as, Altered Carbon style? 
Hmm. I'm a superhero. Uh, uh, girl? I mean, what is it? Supergirl? Is that the Avenger that's Supergirl? Uh, that, that's no, like, Supergirl's on... No, no, no. What's the one that's... Um, oh, cat, uh, gosh. Catwoman? Catwoman? No. Like, oh. Um, in the in the Avengers, in Black Widow. No, in the in the Avengers, Captain Marvel. The main... Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Mm, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she could like she could do, do a lot of stuff. Everything like she's so powerful. Yeah. They had to just say she was gone. That was. Cool. They had to just say, you know what? The reason why we haven't fixed this yet is because she's on another. She's in another galaxy yeah. saving the world. Because as soon as she came back, she was just too powerful for this to have you know gotten so far out of control. That's so I'll great. I'll just pick Captain Marvel. I would pick Storm. You know, yeah. she's pretty damn badass. Okay. She can control the weather. Yeah, maybe she can, she can give, some, give us a real winter around here. <laughs> <laughs> we need to stop the polar cap, the ice caps from melting. I think Storm could do something. Yeah. Well, uh, you are one of a few characters and actors who made it from uh, Altered Carbon Season 1 to Altered Carbon Season 2. It seems like every time there's a big backstory reveal in both seasons, that's you with a, with a flashback type of scene. So I'm curious, how much of the overarching story do you know when you're filming? Or do you, are you only know, knowing the scenes that you're doing those flashbacks? Um, season one, I had a, I had a big idea of how the this, this story unfolded, because um, I came in to film pretty late in the season. Um, and I'd seen a lot of what Joel you know, did. So I had to work backwards in terms of, since I was OG, and that was the first create, kind of first character of Takeshi Kovacs. Um, I had to kind of match what he did in a, in a lot of things. Season two, I didn't know much. Um, I was getting them, you know, script by script, and we'd learn about it every week. And you know, I, I kind of like working that way in a lot of ways because I don't want to know the ending yet. Um, so I, I was getting it week by week. Yeah, that's interesting. And sp I mean, speaking of Joel, kind of playing it first, but you're the OG. So did, was, was your performance kind of more influenced by Joel's or did you get to feel a sense of ownership like, I'm the original, I want to define this? Like, how did that work? No, I was terrified, you know, because <laughs> I, I had finished another show called Falling Water where I had to gain like 30 pounds. So I was, I was, and they wanted to be this overweight cop and Lita Caligridis, the showrunner from season one, said, can you come play this character? And, and uh, I was 195, 196 pounds. And I said, there's no way I can make it. And, and then I texted her back. I said, well, how long do I have? She goes, can you do it in five weeks? And, you know, actors lie to get jobs. I said, I could do it in five weeks. And so I was on ticking clock and, and I ate nothing but chicken breasts and, and broccoli and ran three times a day. Um, so I didn't have the, it wasn't the ownership or the confidence, it was just it was just pure fear that I was running out of because I got a picture of Joel Kinnaman and she said, you got your body has to kind of match his in terms of sleeves. And I was like, holy shit, wow, like yeah. he's in crazy shape. Um, so yeah, you know, basically I was running on fear. Wow, that's crazy. And, and at comicbook.com we love to talk about superheroes. So with Altered Carbon and the re-sleeving deal, I'm asking everybody, if you could re-sleeve into a superhero's body, who, what hero would you like to be? Um, Hugh Jackman in The Wolverine. The Wolverine. Because I got to see it up close and he was no joke. He was scary. Um, and he was intense and, and his skin was like paper thin. And you know, I remember him doing a photo shoot where he unleashes the claws and I looked at him and said, I want to be him one day. <laughs> that, was, that was speaking of bodies. That was one impressive body. Um, and, and, and in this show, there's about a, there's a very interesting twist with your character about halfway through something unexpected uh, that I never saw coming. Where he where he gets involved in some stuff. I don't want to say anything for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. What was your reaction to kind of learning that big twist and how your character plays into stories we might not have expected him to? Um, all I can say is I got a, I was I got on the phone with Allison who is our showrunner, and she told me the twist, and I was like, holy shit, this is gonna be a fun season. And uh, that's all I can say, but, but you will see some things that you haven't seen on a show. And, and I know a lot of people say that, but this one is, is, is uh, we already start on a bullet train. Once I come in, you know, I think the bullet train hits another 10% and just flies. Any chance that bullet train goes into a season three with you? I have no idea. <laughs>